Hi everyone, I'm Lisa from Down to Earth Gardening and it's a beautiful fall day in New England. Um, again, we're in zone 6A and we're doing another fall planting. Uh, but this one's a little different than the last foundation garden that we did. So I wanted to talk about it and show you what we're planting and what we're doing out here today. So today we're planting a pretty uh, steep slope. It's a hillside garden bed. And the challenge is that it faces north east so just a tiny bit of morning sun and there's some big trees um, actually on the neighbor's property that also shade the garden and there's nothing we can do about that so we're working with some pretty heavy shade and it's also a very large space it's about 10,000 square feet um, so this summer we did a big garden renovation and we can post some great pictures of our before and after cleanup really went through the whole area cleaned it out and we found a few nice plants that were in there um, there was a little bit of moss flox and some ferns um, some day lilies so we left those in place and now we're going to try to fill up the hill so that it will help with the erosion um, and just add a lot of beauty to the area and also uh, hopefully use uh, less mulch next year because I think we ended up putting down a ridiculous amount of mulch. So I want to first show you a few of the plants that we've selected for the area. We're thinking of doing some big patches of some different plants for some interest and variety and of course seasonal color. Um, but it's more of a woodland garden area and there's currently a large patch of ferns um, on in the hillside that the client really likes. So we're going to start there and we're going to add a couple other varieties of fern in the mix, which I think will be really pretty. So I'm going to show you a few of the plants and the first one I have in my hand here is called a brilliance fern. So it's a dryopterus. And the number one just indicates that it is a size one gallon container. I love how lush green this is right now. Uh, but what I do love about this fern is it, it is an evergreen fern. And in the spring and in the fall, you'll get some bronzy, copper, reddish tones um, in the fronds. So that's really pretty. So we're going to do a mass of that, a big planting, and they will spread underground a little bit and come in nice and full. So that'll cover some nice area. And then the second kind of fern that we're adding in the mix is going to be Crested Surf. And this one, as it matures, I'm going to show you the tag here. Um, you're going to get some different shades of white and green. So that will really pop in a shady area to have that variegation. This one is actually a deciduous fern, so this one is going to die back. And because we want to get some flowers in there, but also because the client likes fern, um, this is another really good candidate, Aruncus, which the common name is goat's beard. And I really love this because of the ferny foliage. It does remind me a lot of ferns, but also because it throws out a really beautiful flower, um, much like a stilby, but uh, probably a little bit taller and um, they're a little fuller than the astilbe. So this is a really pretty plant for the hill there. And we didn't really want to do a straight up uh, Pachysandra. It's just so common. We wanted to do something a little bit different. So we've got some really pretty variegated periwinkle or vinca um, to add in the mix. And so we've got a couple of trays of these, but these are so great. One, because of the variegated foliage, but two, because this little plant is actually going to spread out two to three to three feet. So these are going to cover quite a bit of ground. So at first we're going to space these out in a grid and then it's going to cover the whole area pretty quickly. They are fast growers. Um, and of course we can't forget about the fact that they flower and because they've been in a greenhouse I can see a little tiny flower here um, which I'm going to try to show you. So a really pretty ground cover that also flowers. Uh, we have so many goodies back here. 
So another favorite of mine that's a pretty quick spreader is the Laropi, and it's the variegated Laropi. So we're purchasing the smaller sizes because a lot of these are fast growers, so it's not necessary to perch larger sizes. Uh, but we do have quite a few of these. I love these because um, they're considered an evergreen, so you don't have to cut them down in the fall. So you've got something going on in the winter. It's variegated and it also throws out a purple spiky flower, um, which I've seen in gardens now. And it's really pretty, much like a grape hyacinth. And let's see what other goodies. So we've got some Phlox subulata. So this is moss Phlox. And this we're gonna try to put in areas that do get some of the morning sun because this does like a little bit of sun. It's got a needle light texture and it's going to stay evergreen in the winter. And then in the spring, it's going to be covered in flowers. So this will form a nice mat and we have three different colors. Um, we have the Fort Hill, and in the back of the trailer, we have snowflakes um, and a candy stripe, which is a pink and white pinwheel. So three different colors. I think it was white, the pink, and this is a lavender color. So we're gonna do some different patches of that. And the last one I wanna show you um, is actually a bleeding heart. No. <laughs> the last one I wanna show you is a bleeding heart, Dicentra, which is pink diamonds. So it's not the uh, bigger old fashioned bleeding heart. This has a daintier flower and a daintier leaf. But what I like about these is they look great in a woodland garden. They do great um, in some shade and heavy shade, and they are gonna bounce around. So they will essentially create a ground cover um, and throw out a really pretty pink flower in the spring. Sometimes I've noticed in our zone here, we get a reflowering in the fall because they do love the cooler weather. So it's a great day for planting. Um, fall is wonderful because it's great to work in, it's cooler. But even though the temperature, the air has cooled off a little bit, the ground is still warm enough to plant. So it's a wonderful time to plant. We're getting some more rain as well, which really helps with the watering. Uh, but we're gonna show you a little more what we're doing today and maybe it'll inspire you, give you some great ideas for some ground covers. Hi everyone, we are just finishing the plantings over at our um, shady hillside garden planting. We're trying to cover it with a lot of ground covers, um, but there's some other things in the mix. And we're also calling this our More Plants, Less Weeds project, because that's what we're hoping for. Um, like I said, we used a lot of mulch on this hill when we did the first stage, which was a complete cleanup and it took quite a bit of mulch and we're coming back to plant. It's been about a month and there were a lot of weeds already. So we're hoping that we'll use less mulch. It'll help with erosion and there's going to be less weeds and more beautiful plants and flowers here. So I just wanna show you what we've done. The crew is still working at it a little bit. So you might see chalice and pain in the background. Um, the first thing that we've done is we do like to try to reuse, repurpose our plants on a project like this. And 
There were a few things that we moved around and reorganized before we did our new planting. So as I'm going through, I'm going to show you um, what those are and where we relocated them and why. The first thing we relocated is there were three hydrangeas here and they were really getting crowded. So fall is a great time of year to transplant and divide. So we cut those back and then we moved them to a bare spot on the top of the hill. So they're way up top there. We also found some scattered daylilies on the hill here. So Josh dug all of those up and you can see a little peak of them. We did a mass planting of them at the top of the hill here. And then the rest of the space was cleared for the new plants. Um, so I'm just gonna do a rough go through. So this area has been soil tested as well and we did add some compost and some 51010 slow release fertilizer um, for fertility. Um, so you might see the granules scattered in here. So we've got a big patch of vinca vine here on the end and then we've got our lamium and our larope at the top here. And as you'll notice, uh, we like to do mass plantings and what that's going to achieve is we're gonna have big patches or masses of color on this hill, which are really going to pop. Um, so nice big groups of each. And I like to do them in irregular shapes. So what we'll do is we'll go through and place our scattered pots where we want them planted just so we can kind of see what it looks like. And of course have the client have a look and make sure that they like the pattern and the layout. So over here we've got moss flax and pretty variegated vinca. And then we have our goat's beard um, with the nice ferny leaf. And then there were some existing plantings of moss flax and some really pretty ferns and we left those alone because the client really loved those. But this is late afternoon. You can see how shady it is. Uh, the sun is going down behind the hill there. So it does get a peak of morning sun, but not enough to be considered a sun garden. This is really a full shade garden. Um, and some of these plants do need a peak of sun like the moss flocks, but the ones up top that were existing did pretty well. So that's why we felt it was okay to add some more of those. And then if you walk with me, you can get a good look of the whole hill. Quite a large project. Um, like we said, it's about 10,000 square feet. And I, I know that the plants look a little spaced out right now, but we're really planning for the future. You know, you don't want to overdo it when you don't need to. And a lot of these are either going to creep around um, or multiply. So we're just planning ahead. We've added some of the new crested surf ferns in the back here. And some more uh, moss flocks. And we've grouped those by the color. If you'll remember, we have the pink uh, pinwheel and we have the lavender and the white. And then we've got our fringed bleeding heart which are flowering a little bit again, but they're really gonna flower in the spring. And then we've got some more of the vinca vine here. We had two different varieties of vinca. And then existing was a huge patch of fern, which we really love. And it's just starting to die back. Um, we're not quite ready to cut it back so next month we come back in a month for our last round of maintenance for the year so we're going to cut it then we just like to get as much as we possibly can out of our gardens you can see that there's some deer damage up at the top um, so a lot of our plants that we've planted are um, on the deer resistant list but as you know when they get hungry they'll eat anything So lots of beautiful fern. And then we've got some more larope, which I love, moss flocks, vinca, 
some more of the crested fern. And then another item that we relocated, we had three Montauk daisies that are pretty twiggy on the top there, but that's because, um, like I said, it's a great time to move things. So they're going to get cut back pretty soon anyway, so we cut them back and move them, makes it much easier to move, and it's really not gonna hurt them. It was just a little sad because they're in full bloom. Like you can, you can see the others here that are flowering. Um, so three of those up top to fill a gap there. And those were removed from another area. Another group of daylilies that were just scattered through the front here. So Josh dug all those up and we did another mass planting right here, which I think will be really pretty. I like to do the continuity. It's such a long garden. Um, so we do have a smattering of the daylily, the larope, uh, the moss fox in both areas and it kind of ties it all together. And then at the end here, this is the beautiful, brilliant uh, fern, which is an evergreen fern also. And I'm really excited about this taking off in this area. And then we just have some lamium um, in the front here. So again, it's a great time of year for planting. It's uh, mid-fall, so temperatures are, have been in the low 70s during the day and 50s at night. Soil is still warm enough to plant. So we uh, are just gonna water this well and then we're gonna keep it watered until we get a hard frost and then that's it. So I just want you to look around and see how beautiful the foliage is. You can kind of see the needles and the, the leaves falling, but it's such a pretty time of year here in New England and weather-wise, it's a great time for gardening. So I want to say thank you to all of you for joining me again. We love doing these videos and sharing what we're doing and hopefully it's given you some tips or inspired you. Um, if you like the video, please hit like and also subscribe to our channel for some future gardening fun with us.